let's jump into the Big 12 preview. I think we are ready to rock and roll. Big 12 last year had a college football participant or college football playoff participant. Oklahoma knocked it out. Baylor, uh, Baylor Mayfield, Baylor Baker. Baker. God Baker. bless America. We're going to be on Baylor in a minute. Yeah, we're going to get to Baylor uh, because we're starting with Baylor. That's right. Sound good? Go ahead. Let's go on and jump in. Year two for Matt Rule, junior wide receiver uh, Denzel Mims. He is a, a playmaker for sure. Quarterback Charlie Brewer, sophomore. He got four starts last year. Looked good. Offense gets four starters back on offensive line, two wide receivers, but everybody else is pretty new. Uh, they do have some experience, but new starters. Uh, former Tennessee running back Jalen Hurd is projected to be a starting wide receiver, and they think he's going to be a big deal. Uh, this is year two of Phil Snow's defense. It should be better. You, you saw what he was able to do at Temple. Uh, there's not a lot of depth. Health is going to be a, a major issue here. Correct. Right? So let's go on and jump in. Uh, six starters back on offense, five on defense. They went 1-11 and a year ago. Their 2018 over-under is 5.5, and, and the over is minus 160. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, I mean, minus, that's a big number. I was, a, I was expecting to – you know how much I like Matt Rule, and I was expecting to, to bet over because I thought it was going to be a pretty low number. Well, you remember Vegas last year loved this team. I don't, yeah, I thought that was crazy. Loved them, and, and don't get me wrong, they, they covered a lot of numbers. Yeah. Like, they did well, but... But the over-under was ridiculous but last they, year, yeah. too. It was like, what was it last year, like five or it four was, or it something? Was, no, it was five or five and a half, too. I, I mean, mean... It's just crazy. Just crazy. Uh, I have Baylor at four and eight. I'll go on and throw that out. I've got them two and seven in the uh, in the league. Um, I mean, it, the only wins I see... I've got them beating Texas Tech. I've got them beating Kansas. I've got them winning at uh, UT San Antonio. I've got them beating Abilene Christian. And that's it. Everybody else is a loss for me. So I got them five and seven, and and where we differ is the Baylor game. I mean, uh, the uh, Duke game, and and we yeah. talked about that last. We week. talked about that. So, okay, yeah. I mean, other than that, like they play at TCU, at West Virginia, it's at Texas, schedule. at Oklahoma. Like, I don't see where the wins are coming. Yeah, it, it, I, I can't see them going on the road and beating anybody right now. But uh, eventually, they're going to get there. They're going to play. They're going to be tougher this year than they were last year because yeah. that's what Matt Rule teams do. Yeah, I agree. But I think it's going to take time to build toughness from a finesse team. Yeah, yeah, you're uh, you're right. All right, so let's uh, let's jump off them. Let's jump into Iowa State. This is year three for Matt Campbell. Uh, going to give you their uh, their last year results: seven and five in 2017. Pretty big jump for them. Iowa State. Uh, they don't expect much, but uh, but they might be expecting a lot in the future because they were just a couple of games away from playing in the Big 12 championship game last year. Yeah, it worked out pretty good for him. Yeah, it sure did. Uh, 2018 over under is six and a half. Uh, the vig on that is uh, minus 125. So they expect to go over, and I think I probably agree with them. I got them. I got them seven and five. I, I got them, them seven and five as well. Yeah, I, I got I them think... four and five in conference. So all five. I, I think that they're going to win all of their non-conference games. Now you and I, I think, so differ, differ on yeah, Iowa. We differ on Iowa, so I don't think they're going to beat Iowa. So you, you've got so. them five and four in the league. Correct. Um, who? I'm just curious. Who? Who do you have them upsetting? I don't. Because uh, I've got oh, them beating, probably West Virginia. Do you have them losing to West? Virginia? I got them losing to West Virginia, nah, but see, West Virginia I, I, does come yeah. to uh, Ames. And and West Virginia is one of those teams where I mean they. They're gonna they're gonna lose a game they should win, and I don't know that they should win that. I bet that's a pretty small point spread. I don't even know. Oh yeah, because be a, I mean they're playing there. they're playing at Iowa State. Yeah, so I've got I've got we've got West Virginia different, and that's the that's the game West Virginia and Iowa. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. All right, so moving on to Kansas. Is there anything to talk about with Kansas? Uh, I mean, yeah, are they the I mean there is of this conference. There is. It, look, they they went one eleven last year. They're over under three, and they're plus one thirty to go over the three. <laughs> Uh, they even have Rucker on the schedule. Yeah, they are. Look, they're they've got six offensive starters back. They got nine defensive starters back. I, I'm I just want to to read this note off to you. They had 24 recruits in their 2018 class. How many of those do you think were JUCO guys? Oh, I would bet at least 20, close to all. No, no, no. It, it, I mean, it was still a lot. It was 11. Yeah. 11 of 24. See, I can't imagine them being able to recruit outside of the JUCO, though, to get real starting talent at Division I. Probably football. not. I mean, you would have to develop them. Uh, David Beatty's in his fourth season, and this is the fourth straight that they are still unsettled at quarterback. Have no idea what they're if, doing. If I was a historically 
if I was coaching or running a program at a historically bad football team that was not an academic institution, Kansas is not. <laughs> uh, then, then I'm talking like your Vanderbilt, your Stanford, your you know yeah. Ivy League, whatever. I think I would go after nothing but JUCO guys because that's where you're going to so. get the most amount of talent. Screw trying to develop them. Yeah, like there are really good JUCO quarterbacks out there that can play Division One football. Well, speaking of that, uh, JUCO quarterback Miles Kendrick, he led the College of San Mateo uh, to the California State Championship game last yeah. year. It looks like he might be the starter this year. Uh, I mean, we'll see. Peyton Bender was a JUCO guy that came in last year, but he lost his job in the middle of the year. Carter Stanley came in and, and started after him, but he wasn't any better. So and Sometimes it could be you know, too. They do have their first team all Big 12 defensive lineman, Daniel Wise, back. And he could have gone to the NFL. That's right. And he chose not to. So he's back for a senior season. Running back, they've got the most uh, potential there. They've got the most talent at that position. But if you don't have an offensive line that can block for him, what are they going to do? Kicker Gabriel Rui was granted an extra year of eligibility. Bright spot, he went 17 out of 20 on field goals last year. So if you're Kansas and you're going to be kicking field goals a lot, that's where you go. All right. Uh, I mean, 2 I and 10. I got them 2 and 10. They're I got not, them 0 and 9 in the they're conference. They're not cracking the three for the over. I've, I've actually got them winning at Central Michigan, but I could see them losing that. No, I've got a, I've got a, a definite L there. <laughs> definite L there. Central Michigan's going to beat the crap out of them. So, uh, so you've got them two and ten though. Well, I got them beating Rutgers, man. Oh, you got them beating Rutgers. That's right. That's right. Okay. Rutgers just lost like eight players that are going to be starters. I know. It's, it, look, listen. I know, and that, and, that and a, that's that is a garbage program. But well, Rutgers isn't garbage. Garbage. Like they're not. They're not. <laughs> they were in a bowl game like four years ago, decade was, ago. It wasn't that with long. Greg Schiano. <laughs> yeah. No, it was uh, Kyle Flood. Like they came in and beat Arkansas a couple. Of, anyway. Blah, blah, Kansas State. Let's jump into Kansas State. The Fighting Snyders. This is – this. The, it, he's got to be like the godfather of college football right now, right? He is uh, – look, he is 79. Did I write that down? Yeah, he turned 79 in October. He's got a contract through like 85? Something like that, yeah. yeah they just signed him to an extension. Well, and like, do you sign an 80-year-old to an he extension? Will, he anything? will never quit until his son gets to have the job. 7-5 yeah. last year. They're over-under in 2018 is 7 but it is plus 150. Uh, they've got seven offensive starters back, five on defense. The quarterback competition is between Skylar Thompson and Alex Delton, both of which can play, but I don't know how much talent is around them. This is just a hard-nosed team, right? Um, they're replacing all three starting linebackers, uh, including Trent Tanking and uh, uh, Jade Kirby. Uh, those were last year's leading tacklers. Alex Barnes is back at running back. He had 819 yards and seven touchdowns in a backup role last year. Uh, they lost cornerback DJ Reed to the NFL early, but three out of four in the secondary return. Uh, you got to wonder what the expectations actually are. And I don't have high expectations for them. I've got them six and six. I got them four and five in the conference. My expectations are lower than yours. I got them five and seven. Really? Yeah. I would be better than the under for, for them. For but Bill I Snyder would, to I, be like less than a bowl game. But I, I do not think that they – I think I don't think they'll go under or over. I, I'm going to bet them under. I can't even talk right now. <laughs> but I'm going to be betting them to cover a lot of these games. Yeah. Oh, that's absolutely. Just, that's just what they do. He's a covering machine. Yeah, he he certainly is. Uh, so we've I've got them six and six. You got them five and seven. Got them five and seven. I, so both of you, us have you, the under. You think them? You think they lose in Mississippi State? Oh, absolutely. So absolutely. I mean, a brand new quarterback against that defensive line. I mean, g- give me a break. Give me yeah. a break. Just, Oklahoma. Just, uh, I, I don't have them really upsetting anybody. Oh, yes, I do. I've got them beating Oklahoma State because Oklahoma State comes in at home, um, and it's after Oklahoma State plays, uh, plays Iowa State. Oklahoma, 12-1 and one last year. or I mean, you can say 12-2 and two if you want, but we only do regular season and championship games. 12-1. and one, I don't even do championship games. That's it. Well, I'm taking the roll on that. I'm taking the run. That's my junk. You would. 12-1 <laughs> and one last year. They're over under this year is 10. They are minus 130. Six starters back on offense, five on defense. They lost Baker Mayfield. They uh, they lost the unanimous All-American left tackle Orlando Brown. All-American tight end Mark Andrews. But they got Rodney Anderson back at running back. And that's a good thing. So Rodney Anderson's back. Three out of five offensive linemen are back. Wide receiver uh, Marquise Brown and CeeDee Lamb are back. 
Quarterback Kyler Murray, who signed with the Oakland Athletics, is playing one year of football. That's all he's got, one year. Can he do what Baker did? I don't think so. Like, I, I listen, I, I'm – is Lincoln Riley a good coach, or was he just in, like, the perfect situation? I, I think he's a good coach, but I don't know that he's a great coach. And that's where we're different. I mean, that's where, yeah. you, not, through, not where we're different, but that's, that's the difference between a historic per- perennial 10-win team in college football and 8-4, and 9-3 and three every yeah. year. I mean, that's the difference. He had an all-world quarterback that – Everybody shortchanged his entire career. Oh, yeah. And he parlayed it from a walk-on at Texas Tech to number one overall draft pick. Exactly. That is we, – we talked about this with, with Clemson losing – It's never Watson. before seen. It's just, it's just really hard to lose a transcendent player. Yeah. It really is. No, you're, you're right. You're right. Um, and I think it's going to hurt a little bit. There's a lot of youth in the secondary. We'll talk about the defense. Kenneth Murray should absolutely be a beast at linebacker. Um, you know, I I've got him at ten and two. I've got him right on the number. I got him nine and three. Okay. And and I will tell you this: there's one game I waffled on over and over and over again, and I just couldn't bring myself to make them eight and four. I I think the Red River rivalry is that's one of them. I've got tough. them losing. See, see, I could easily see them losing that. You got them losing to like Florida Atlantic or something. No, I've got them. No, the the big upset I have for them, I've got them losing at TCU. I've got them losing got to one. Oklahoma State, which you probably don't have. No. Um, and then I've got them losing at Morgantown last game of the season. You go into Morgantown, that place, if they have nothing to play for, they are going to ruin your life. West Virginia has depth issues, and I feel no, like at the end of the you're season. You're probably right, but but that's why I don't like picking games every game this early. Yeah, I think at the end of it, they they beat Texas or they lose Texas, they beat West Virginia. They, you know, I, I think it's going to end up around nine and three. Okay, that, I mean that makes sense. I'm I'm only one I'm game better. Mar- yeah, I'm not married I'm, to any I'm of these games. I'm ten and two, seven and two. I've got them losing to Texas and at TCU. I've watched West Virginia make people cry before. I've just watched them do it. That's a really hard place to play. It's going to be cold. No, you're right. It's going to be gross, and 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 those West Virginians are going to get after you. You are you are so, correct. That, Oklahoma State. Let's let's jump into Oklahoma State. Come on. They went nine and three last year. They're over under this year's eight, and the juice is minus one twenty on that. They got five starters back on offense, seven on defense. They've had three straight ten win seasons, but they are replacing Mason Rudolph and James Washington. Taylor Cornelius. Uh, it's a, he's a redshirt senior. Yep. He takes over at running back. Justice Hill returns at running back. Uh, sorry, quarterback. Taylor Cornelius is quarterback. Uh, Justice Hill returns at running back. He had 1,467 yards last year. Uh, wide receiver uh, Jalen McCleskey, it, he leads a talented group of wide receivers. They've always got good wide receivers. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna place Washington pretty easily. That's just what the Gunny does. The defense finished 79th in total defense last year. That's after they finished 53rd, 93rd, 100th, and 92nd in the years prior. But they brought in... Duke defensive coordinator Jim Knowles, they are switching to a four two five defense. Now that will take a little bit of time. They'll be, they'll be better though. They, they'll be they, better. They might break the fifties. Yes. Like that's maybe. that's dry. I mean, that's twenty spots better. Yeah. And we'll and we'll see what happens, right? Uh I've got them at nine and three. I got them six and three in the conference. I've got them losing at TCU, at Oklahoma, and at Kansas State. Yeah. I've got them ten and two. We pretty much take our Oklahoma and Oklahoma State picks, and we flip them based on that one game. Yeah, and um, and and I like this team. I really like that they lost a quarterback, but they're replacing them with a really experienced quarterback who played a lot last year. By the way, yeah, like he, Mason Rudolph got hurt a couple of times in games. This dude, like they they ran sets for for him. Um, so it, he's really experienced. He's not young. He should know what he's doing. He should be able to protect the football and. I don't worry about losing Washington while that guy was crazy good and did, didn't say anything. Gundy just does this, man. He finds these guys all over the place. Yeah. If you're hurting at receiver, it was the old Wisconsin move. If you don't know who to draft, just take a Wisconsin offensive lineman. If yeah. you're hurting at receiver and you don't really know who to draft in the NFL, take a wide receiver. You're in the second or third round. Just just take an Oklahoma wide receiver, Oklahoma State wide receiver. He's yeah. going to be baller. You're right. So TCU went ten and three last year. 2018 over under is seven and a half. Now they are minus 130 to go over the seven and a half. They've got three starters back on offense, not great, but six starters back on defense. They finished in the top 10 three of the last four years. 
Gary Patterson understands how to coach defense, but the offenses have been insanely prolific when they've been good for the most part. Quarterback Kenny Hill is gone, uh, but Sean Robinson looks like he's going to be the real deal. Yeah, I think he's good. Uh, it's the most talent they have ever had at the skill positions, ever. They've got four stars across the board. Defense, the last five uh, star, or they lost five starters, but uh, but there's tons of experience there. It's like a lot of upperclassmen. They've got 14 upperclassmen in their two deep on defense. That's a big deal. So I I really really like this team. I've got TCU at 10 and two. We're we're really close on this one. That's I've got them losing at Texas and at West Virginia, and that's it. I got them 11 and one. Dang. And and the, I thought I was going above and beyond on but this. But you one. Kn- but you know my like infatuation with with Gary Patterson, right? Like yeah. that's that's pretty well documented that I'm I'm kind of infatuated with him. I think he's one of I mean realistically, we've had this argument. I really do think he could be considered one of the best one or two coaches in college football. Yeah, he doesn't right? he doesn't get the talent that Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama, Oklahoma ever get. He's never going to have that being at a small private school. And what he does with his talent, as opposed to what everybody else does with their talent, is just unreal. I think if he ever went to one of those big boy schools, everybody in the world better look out. I think you're probably right. Do you think he probably should have gone at some point? I think this might be the year for him to jump. You think so? I mean, he's getting on up there. I don't care. Like he, it's it, he's on up there in years right Listen, now. Listen, man, we just talked about Bill Snyder is eighty years old. Uh, and he just right. signed like a five six year extension. <laughs> all right, that guy. If we're all day to day, yeah, Bill that Snyder guy is day to day. Bill Snyder is going to turn seventy nine this year, and people are talking about Saban retiring at like sixty six. Yeah. Like, give I'm, me a break. You and I have had this conversation in the past. If Joe Oliva, if I could push him off a, a building, yeah, and and I could make <laughs> and I could make Gary Patterson my coach, I would be the happiest man the world has ever seen. I could uh, I could believe that. Let's move on to Texas. Uh, 2017, they went six and six, not great, but they looked better in spots. Definitely uh, better than they did the, under Strong. The end of the year, they looked a lot better. Yes. than the beginning of the year. That's important for a new coach taking over a program. Exactly. They're over under this year is eight and a half, and the juice is minus one thirty on that. So. The expectation is they're going to win at least nine games. They got six starters back on offense, six on defense. It's year two of Tom Herman. Sophomore quarterback Sam Ellinger, or Ellinger, however you want to say it. I've heard it both ways. Is the uh, the newly uh, named starter. Uh, defense coordinator Todd Orlando had the defense absolutely rolling in 2017. 21.2 points per game. They led the Big 12 in third down percentage. Uh, they led the country with seven non-offensive touchdowns. Their biggest problem at 17 was offensive line, but they added Herb Hand, uh, uh, coach from Auburn. Uh, I think their punter, Michael Dixon, is probably their biggest loss from last season. Like, and, and you got to admit, that dude was unreal, right? Okay. I don't know. I am. How do you gauge punters? That's it. Either they're awesome or they're not. So, well, well like, like back in the heyday of Oregon when they never punt it, like, what if that punter was great? He just never got on the field. I mean, you you got a point. You got a point. All right, look. I know that my pick is crazy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have Texas at eleven and one. Okay, now that is crazy. I thought I was cra- see. All right, so we're, I told you we're that little... you were not going to believe my my well, picks I mean, today. Uh, but I've got them eleven and one. I've got them eight and one in the conference. The only loss I have them on is is at Oklahoma State. But they've got Iowa State at home, West Virginia at home, Oklahoma is is you know. Whatever USC and TCU are both at home. I don't, I don't I like think you them. can just chalk up W's. At I understand. I, I got them nine and three, so we're like, like we're not I too far good. off. I, we, but. We're very obvious on. There's a four horse race in this ten man conference. Yeah, and and it's clear. It is Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, TCU, and Texas. These four teams. What about West Virginia? Not this year. Not th- too much. Too but, many problems with depth. I like I like West Virginia to upset some people. I also like them to take a bunch of L's. Yeah, so. I'm with you. All right, so you got them at nine and three. I got them nine and three, and that was I gave Oklahoma that win in the Red River rivalry. They could take that and you know flip that. I mean it. Oh yeah, they, I'm with you. they won ten games. It would not shock me. I can understand it won't, that. It won't surprise. It would surprise me more if they won only eight games. That 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 makes sense. That makes sense. All right, Texas Tech. Let's move on to 
Cliff Kingsbury's bunch. This is his sixth year. He is 30 and 33. They went six and six last year. They're over under this year is six. And they are minus 130 to hit that. So they are favored to go over the six. They got five starters back on offense, nine on defense. All five starters return on offensive line. But that is it for the offense. That doesn't mean that they don't have experience, right? They, they've got experience, but it's not starting experience. Quarterback McLean Carter appears to be the uh, the starter. He is replacing Nick Sheminick. Hope I said that right. Uh, defense improved drastically under David Gibbs. They have nine starters back, so pay attention to senior linebacker Dakota Allen. He is of last chance U fame. Check him out. I'm telling you, that dude is unreal on that defense. He's he's going to be all Big 12. Uh, they went from 128th to 98th in scoring defense last year, 116 to 62nd in run defense. And check this out. Went from 112 to number 6 in the country in turnovers gained last year. A lot of that had to do with Dakota Allen and the, the chaos that he can cause back there. David Gibbs knows what he's doing. Still not a big fan of him, though. I got Texas Tech 3-9. and nine. So we're really close. I hate their schedule. I'm, no, no, they do have the hardest schedule in the conference, and it's not close. It's yeah. just not close. They have two non-conference games. I think they're going to lose both of them, and nobody else has that set up. I think they're going to beat Houston. I, I've got them losing to Ole Miss. But, I, I mean, it, I, listen to this. They play at Oklahoma State, at TCU, at Iowa State, at Kansas State, at Baylor, and they've got Oklahoma and Texas at home. But and the, West Virginia at, at home. The, at the end of it is they, they, they're not – everybody else has – Pretty much three non-conference gimmies, right? Yeah, and they don't. Almost. Them and West Virginia don't. No. Them not, and West Virginia the got two. West Virginia got two big boys. They've got a big boy and a power six team. And I, I don't know that Houston's going to be bad. I mean, I know this. They got an all-world defensive lineman that, that's probably going to be the number one pick in the draft. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. So um, Let's move on to West Virginia. End up with uh, with these guys. For record for Texas Tech. Yeah, what you got? I'm 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 three and nine as well. Okay. If they were two and ten, four and eight, they're they're it wouldn't somewhere surprise you. In somewhere there. in there. Yeah. yeah, somewhere between two and four wins. Uh West Virginia, seven and five last year. They're over under a seven. They are minus one forty to go over the seven. Uh, a lot of that just depends on depth, health, right? Seven offensive starters back, four on defense. Uh all the talk about West Virginia goes to quarterback Will Greer, wide receiver David Sills. Period. Uh left tackle uh uh Kajunti, Kajunte. Kahunt, uh, I don't even know how to say his name. You got it. He's spurning the NFL for a chance at the Big 12 title. We'll see. Uh, the offense won't be a problem. The defense could be. Depth was already an issue across the board. But in spring, linebacker uh, uh, Quindarius Qualls and number two middle linebacker Brendan Ferns both went down with ACL injuries. Not good. Uh, they've got a strong chance to be 6-0 before they go to Iowa State, but November is insane, right? They... Uh, November, they've got at Texas, TCU, at Oklahoma State, and Oklahoma to end the season. Sit, hang on. A strong chance to go 6-0 and o to start the season? If they are healthy, yes, they can beat Tennessee. They can win at NC State. They, they can beat Kansas State. They go on the State. road to NC State and just throw up a W. I think they could. That's crazy. You're, That's not you're, crazy. You're crazy. What are you talking about? That's crazy. NC State is a real team that you are not giving any credit to at all. I made them eight and four in my pit. What are you talking about? I don't. I, I don't know who you. I got West Virginia nine and three. I think Will Greer and David Sills are going to be awesome this year, but I like them more early than I do late. I got them seven and five at best. They're six and six. At best, they're six and six. And that's with. A, Wait, you've got them seven and five, but at best, five. they're six and six. No, no. At worst, sorry. At worst, they're six and six. So no, at seven, best, they're, no. Seven and five is their ceiling. They could be six and six, and that's with an upset against Oklahoma. Are you just trying to piss off West Virginia fans? No, man. But I, I think their <laughs> schedule's insanely hard. We talked about the big four teams in the in this yes, conference. I'm with so you. So if you say they're not better than those four, and you're I got them beating those, TCU, well, and I got them beating, or I got them winning at Iowa State, I got them beating uh, NC State. You know, I just don't know that you're going to open the season up. Tennessee is not great, but that's fine. You can beat Tennessee, and and and, and that's okay. To think that you're just going to walk in and beat Tennessee and NC State and just say we've got both of these wins and, and they're gimmies, like that's just not true. I'm not saying they're gimmies. I'm saying they've got a good chance to be 6 0. A chance. I think their absolute ceiling is 7 and 5, and I don't think there's any way they start the season out 6 0. That's going to wrap up the Big 12 preview.